today I'm going to make my skinny slow cooker chicken pot pie recipe. I shared it on my Instagram and my Facebook page a couple weeks ago and I had some people ask me for the recipe so I'm going to share that today. So the first thing I'm going to do is to trim off the fat. You don't have to do this um, but I just I don't like chicken makes me kind of squeamish anyway because it's kind of gross so I'll trim off all the fat that I can without wasting too much of the chicken and put that in the bottom of the slow cooker. I typically, um, we'll try to make at least a meal once a week that has leftovers and usually if I do that, I'll do it on Tuesday night and have leftovers on Wednesday or I'll do it like today, like Wednesday morning and have, left, have dinner for Wednesday night and then leftovers on Thursday. And I do that because my girls have church on Wednesday nights and then now my oldest daughter has dog club on Thursday nights for 4-H. So we're there usually pretty late and it's hard to make supper. So um, that has made my life a lot easier. This is actually, that's made my life a lot easier. My cutting board is terrible by the way. It spins around every time you put pressure on it. So it's kind of like Russian roulette whenever you are trying to cut something. Now it doesn't matter. I'm kind of cutting this chicken, you know, haphazardly because you're going to end up shredding it after it's cooked anyway. So it doesn't really matter what it goes in like. Um, I just want to make sure that I get, oh, this cutting board. I just want to make sure that I get all this kind of gross stuff off. So the recipe calls for um, one pound of chicken breast, but I, I think that's probably more like three pounds since I do want to have it for tonight and then also tomorrow. So that kind of depends on so how much chicken you use kind of depends on how many people you're trying to feed and how many days you want to be able to have leftovers. The chicken does go in the bottom of the slow cooker. And the next thing is celery. Now the recipe calls for three and a half stalks. I will probably use more than that um, just because I like celery and I like the taste and texture that it gives to the chicken pot pie. So I'm just gonna chop those up. And I guess I should mention that the chicken that we use is the Coleman Organic Chicken from Costco. I used to get the organic chicken from Whole Foods and it's good. It's just way cheaper at Costco, which is one of the reasons why I have a Costco membership. And I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to do any kind of a cooking video because you all will see that I'm very spastic in the kitchen. I have no cutting skills, basically. Um, I'm afraid of knives anyway, so it's kind of scary every time I try to cook something, um, but I'm not a professional by any means, and I don't want to be because I really don't like to cook. But things like this where you can make something and have dinner for two nights is really nice. Even if I didn't have somewhere to be tomorrow like we do, it would be nice to just have to cook once and eat it twice. So I have found that has been really helpful for us. So lately I've been doing that even twice a week, having a dinner one night and then having enough for leftovers the second night. So that makes my meal planning a lot easier and it makes it a lot easier to fit more things into our schedule because we do homeschool, we are busy, the kids do have different activities and I think sometimes people think that just because you homeschool you don't have anywhere to be or you don't have any kind of a schedule you need to follow but that's definitely not true. My kids still have places to go, I still have places to go and things to do and I'm active at home with exercise and we have a new puppy that keeps us busy so there's lots of stuff to do so it's always helpful to not have to cook every single night of the week. Um, let's see, I don't know, I'm going to put some more because I do like the celery. Maybe one more stalk and then that'll be enough. The celery I had left over last time I made this the girls have been using to make cricket habitats. So they catch crickets and put them in these little boxes that we have with celery and water and all kinds of little things and they've been sleeping in their rooms with those crickets. I thought that was pretty funny. So that's probably enough celery and it cooks down a little bit smaller so um, I don't make it terribly tiny. The next thing is a small onion chopped up and I'm just going to cut off the ends and then I have a mini chopper that I use because like I said I'm afraid of knives so basically I'm just going to chop it in little pieces and then put it in my mini chopper 
Which this is perfect for somebody like me who does not like knives which do you, or you just don't have time to sit there and chop all day. So I just drop the onion down into the chopper and it just takes a second. So I'm just going to dump that, all of that, into the slow cooker. Oh boy, my eyes. It's a good thing I don't have makeup on yet. It's still early in the morning. Ooh. Oh my goodness, that one burns. <laughs> it's still early. So, um... I don't have any makeup on, thankfully. Okay, I think that's all that I'm chopping. Yes. So everything else is just a matter of pouring in from cans or bags. So um, it calls for two cans of the cream of chicken soup. I use the 98% fat-free version, which, I mean, I never have had this recipe with the full version, like the non-fat-free version or whatever. But um, so I don't know taste difference-wise if there is a difference. I'm sure there probably is maybe a little bit, but I think when you cook it up and you put everything in there together, you don't, you're not gonna notice a difference. And it'll save you a lot of calories that way. So two cans of that, and then one cup of skim milk. Put that in there. You could probably use whole fat milk if you want, but we have skim milk and that's what the recipe called for, so that's what I used. And then um, the recipe calls for uh, one teaspoon garlic powder and one half teaspoon of salt and I didn't have any garlic powder and I'd gotten this at Costco a couple weeks ago this is the garlic salt and this is what I used last time it tasted fine so I used one teaspoon of the garlic salt and then I didn't add any extra salt and it, it was I think it was fine so I'm just gonna add this is a half teaspoon so I'm gonna add one teaspoon of garlic salt um, it calls for half a teaspoon of pepper. I didn't put that in there at all either, which I don't particularly like pepper, but if you like pepper, you can add that. If you don't add it, I don't think it really feels like it's missing anything. The next thing is your vegetables. Now, um, it calls for a 16 ounce bag of mixed vegetables. This is 16 ounces. This is the Whole Foods 365 organic peas and carrots. Um, I already had peas. I really wanted to add just a bag of carrots, but I couldn't find them and I'm too lazy to chop them. So um, I just got this because it does have the peas and the little carrot strips. And I will see. I don't know if I'm going to add any more peas. I like a lot of peas, but since I put more celery than I did last time, um, yeah, I'm going to add. I'm going to add just a little bit more peas. I wish there was more carrots, but it'll be okay. And this is from Costco. This is the organic green peas, like this giant bag. I don't want to put too much. Okay. The last time I made this, I did not make biscuits for the top. It calls for Pillsbury Grand's flaky biscuits to put on top um, or on the side, but I did not do that last time. That's the only thing I feel like this recipe really missed. When you have chicken pot pie, you really want some kind of a crust or something like that. So, and the kids definitely like that too. They, they miss having biscuits on them. This is exactly what I did last time, except for adding the carrots. Um, let me just check my recipe, make sure. So I'll read it out loud again, just in case. Now this does say one pound boneless, skinless chicken breast. I use probably two and a half or three pounds. One small diced onion, three and a half celery stalks diced, two cups of the um, cream of chicken soup, one cup skim milk, one teaspoon garlic powder, one teaspoon dried thyme, I didn't use that either, uh, half a teaspoon salt, I didn't do that because I used the one teaspoon of the garlic salt, but if you didn't, you can use the half a teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon black pepper, a 16 ounce bag of frozen mixed vegetables, um, it calls for two tablespoons of parsley, I didn't do that either, and then the biscuits at the end, for you to use either on the side or to put on top of everyone's bowl. So that's really it. It says on, on here in the recipe to mix the chicken soup, the milk, the water, the garlic powder, the thyme, the salt, and the pepper to whisk it before you pour it in. I didn't do that last time. I just kind of dumped it all in like I did today and everything turned out fine. Okay, so that's really it for right now. I mean, it just says to cover and cook for four hours on high. I'm gonna turn it on high or eight hours on low. And about 30 minutes before you plan to serve the food, you need to go ahead and get the chicken out and shred it with a fork. And from my experience, this always shreds really easily. So you just wanna tear it in little tiny pieces, almost like you were making a pulled pork sandwich or something. 
Um, so you shred it with two forks and then put it back in the slow cooker for just about 30 minutes and then it should be ready to eat. It is 3.45 and we want to eat around 4.30. So this is kind of what everything has cooked down to and it's pretty much done. I just need to take the chicken out and shred it. Okay, so I just pulled everything, all the chicken out and I shredded it pretty well. It makes quite a lot of chicken when I doubled the chicken, like it said before, to use a pound, and I used about three pounds, so that's quite a bit of chicken, so we'll have a lot of leftovers tomorrow. I'm just trying to shred it. Of course, I can't do it very well one-handed, but it does really shred very easily if you just have two forks and kind of pull it apart. I'm going to put all that back into there. I'm going to turn it back up to high just to make sure that all the chicken's done, since I did use more chicken than the recipe called for. I want to make sure the chicken's good and done.